Welcome to the video, everyone. This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And today, as a guest, we have back on the channel, Dr. Jordan Grants. Welcome, Jordan. Thanks, Stephen. Happy to be here. Thanks, man. So today, we're going to talk about connections, relationships between TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, and the prostate, prostate cancer, uh, other prostate issues, maybe, because there are a lot of myths about that. Isn't that right, Jordan? Yes, a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So first thing, maybe, maybe the biggest myth, uh, does TRT cause prostate issues? Um, in my experience, and basically the latest data from the last 10 years, maybe longer, the answer is no. Um, and we can kind of back up and I'll link, I'll send you some papers that we can link to the video. I've got some, some really good ones. Actually, there's a great one by Dr. Morgan Taylor that kind of summarizes the history of this myth. And it's, I just found it today. I'd never read it and it's excellent. It's got, the, it's got references to the old studies, you know, kind of where this derived. Um, so basically I think it was like 1941 and I think these guys won Nobel prize for this realized that uh, if you castrated a man with prostate cancer, it would regress the prostate cancer if it was metastatic. So in their logic, they assumed that the opposite was also true, that giving a man testosterone caused prostate cancer. And I think the original myth was that the problem with those guys study, they gave testosterone, I think, to two men who had prostate cancer and only one of them, they had some lab work. They didn't have PSA back then. And it was the prostate acid phosphatase level and it went up a little bit. And that was their proof that testosterone worsened prostate cancer. It was really just really poor thinking. And um, throughout the years, you know, that was kind of believed. And um, there were, which I didn't know, and it's in this paper, some studies in the 60s where they actually gave men testosterone with prostate cancer. and a, it didn't seem to cause any worse issues. And in fact, a lot of the guys reported immediate relief of bone pain, better sense of well-being. I mean, all the stuff we talk about now, there's, there just was this common myth and it just got hammered into people. And it's still repeated today by a lot of older doctors that, you know, testosterone is fuel to the fire, basically of prostate cancer. Um, and so Dr. Morgan Teller, I think, and, and again, just read this paper because he, he basically went and just dug into all the research, just like a good detective would, and tried to piece the, everything together. And um, he came out, I think it was 2009, I have to go back and look with the saturation model, which just explains a lot of what we see. That basically, if you remove testosterone from prostate cancer, it will regress the cancer. But if you go above a certain level, and that, I don't know, let's say 250 nanograms per deciliter, anything more than that does not affect the cancer. And um, in fact, they've got studies now on super physiologic doses of testosterone that may actually be beneficial to men with prostate cancer. Um, so there's just a lot of, and this is true, you know, this is why we talk about this stuff all the time. This is true in all areas of science. When you start with bad premises and um, assumptions, you can have 40 or 50 years of bad research based on that belief and you start seeing what you want to see. And until somebody comes along and questions the, the model and goes, Hey, wait a minute, we've got all these studies that completely falsify that hypothesis until that happens. People just keep rolling with the same myth over and over again. Um, I think there still need to be a lot of, you know, randomized controlled trials, obviously, but everything since, and I did a study or not study. I did a, um, a search, for papers just from 2016 forward. And I mean, every single one, no association of testosterone and prostate cancer. In fact, more men obviously with prostate cancer have low testosterone and they're looking at that now. Obviously that's an association, but if you can show that men with higher testosterone don't get prostate cancer, men given testosterone don't get prostate cancer any more than any other guys do. And some think it may be protective. That falsifies your theory right there. Um, and that's what science is all about is falsification. It's not really proving anything, but you can disprove bad things, you know, and you can also show associations. You can show all these men get testosterone. They're not getting prostate cancer any more than any, anybody else. In fact, they may be getting it less. 
because um, they're probably healthier. And um, so that's the, um, that's the paradigm that's finally shifted. I think the saturation model is, it really is pretty neat. I think there, there may be more to it than even that. I mean, we don't know. I found an interesting paper, um, and we've talked about this in the group before, where they measured intraprostatic DHT levels based on serum blood levels of testosterone. And they found there's really, there's no correlation between your serum blood values of testosterone and your prostatic levels of DHT. So essentially that goes with our intracrine you know, discussions where the, the organ itself processes and converts things to DHT in the cells and it's, it regulates itself. So giving extra testosterone doesn't you know, cause more DHT in the prostate, cause more prostate growth and all that. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, what we have to, really realize, and there's a lot of studies in petri dishes and cell cultures and cancer where they're trying to say that, you know, this hormone causes this cancer and this does this. And it's like, you can't do that. You can't induce cancers in cell cultures with a a hormone and say, that's what happens in the human body. It doesn't work like that. When you take cells out of the human body, pretty much the game is over at that point. You could generate some interesting hypotheses doing that to maybe investigate in the human body, but cells don't work outside like they do inside. And um, of course, a a hormone sensitive tissue like the prostate, of course it's gonna respond some to testosterone because it is an androgen sensitive tissue. Well, those, when cancers arise, those cells will still also respond to hormones in a way, but up to a point. And so that's kind of what he's shown that anything over what 250 or so, I mean, there's a range, doesn't feed it. It doesn't cause it to grow. And that's kind of what I feel the same way about breast cancer in women. They try to blame it on physical, you know, bioidentical estradiol causing breast cancer in women. It's more to it than that. I don't think our own hormones are giving us cancer. If you have a, a hormone sensitive tissue that develops cancer, yeah, if you pull away one of the things it relies on to live, like a hormone, it may regress, but that doesn't mean the opposite is true. So it's just, it's just bad logic. And there's a lot of that in science. And we just, uh, that's why I'm thankful for guys like Dr. Morgan Taylor who've looked into this to really go back and just question the entire paradigm and look for things that disprove that original hypothesis. And that's, that's how science should be. So there's, um, there's still controversy around this, right? Just for liability reasons. Um, there are several papers I'll link and give you that um, are discussing testosterone replacement therapy in men with prostate cancer, like on active surveillance, which I have, I have probably seven or eight patients who have prostate cancer and are on testosterone replacement. Their cancer is not progressing. It's their PSAs aren't going up any faster than anybody else. Um, And there's several papers on this that, you know, other doctors around the country and world are, are doing this now and they're not seeing any worsening. So that's a big deal because these guys need it. I mean, these guys mostly all these older guys that have prostate cancer feel like crap because they have low testosterone. And why would you take away a huge component of their health and quality of life when it's shown that it's not making their cancer any worse? And it may make them actually better because they're healthier, they're out doing things. Um, Improving your health overall is only going to help with a cancer and not, you know what I mean? Um, I think there's a lot of guys in the group that, you know, they still think that the same thing about cancer is they think, with uh, enlargement of the prostate. They think that testosterone feeds the growth, but it's, it's the same principle. And, and, and they've done studies trying to figure out why men get these huge prostates and some don't. And it's, it's, it's not really correlated to the hormone levels uh, in the prostate. So I think there's just more about that that we don't understand. Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. So man, getting on testosterone replacement therapy shouldn't worry about their prostate. And do they have to have checkups regularly with the urologist, a PSA, what do they have to do? According to the guidelines, yeah. I mean, even, even when you're younger, they'll start saying you got to check PSA. I, I think that's bad information because if you really believe the data that testosterone does not flare prostate cancer, doesn't cause it, you should treat that man just like any other man that you'd be screening based on the current guidelines, which is 
absent of risk factors, you start at 55 years old, you go up to 70, and then you discuss it after that if you want to keep screening, which I do recommend. Um, if a man has risk factors, you start younger. But I'm not going to start screening a guy at 40 years old for prostate cancer just because he's going to get on testosterone because it just – it, it means that you're, you really don't believe what you're saying. Right. I mean, I, I understand doing it for like a CYA cover your butt type of thing. Um, but the data is there. And um, so, in my, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I always tell guys giving you testosterone to get you back to where you were is no different than a guy your age having those levels of testosterone. Right. It's no different. So I don't want people all of a sudden lose their minds when somebody's on testosterone. Um, there was controversy about putting guys who had prostate cancer in the past on testosterone. Thankfully, that myth has, has died. You know, I know there's still people that say it's bad, but they just don't know the research. Um, I think if you finished a urology residency in the last 10 years, you should not be telling anyone that getting on testosterone is going to bring back your cancer or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, I had a guy who's uh, in our group, and he's a patient of mine, and he had Gleason 6 prostate cancer, and he got radiation, and we waited about six months. His PSA went down to only maybe 1.2, well, he's low testosterone, so he wanted to get back on testosterone, and his PSA now is going up, and it's over two now, and he's worried about it. And instead of them, and he saw his oncologist about this, and, and his oncologist said, you got on testosterone too soon. That's, that's crap, right? E either you cured the cancer with the radiation, you treated it right, or you didn't. That, that, that being on testosterone did not bring back the cancer. It was either killed or it wasn't. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of stuff that just drives me up the wall that, like you're going to blame the testosterone instead of saying, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get it with the radiation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I have patients all the time that they're still with their cardiologist tells them, yeah, you got to get off testosterone. It's going to kill you. All the stuff we talk about, it's just old myths die hard. And it's the same thing with cardiovascular health as it is with prostate myths and testosterone. And um, it, I think it's changing for the better. It's just taken a while and it takes a while for old dogma to die. Um, but hopefully the younger ones will, will not believe that. I, I'm still scared though, because a lot of younger doctors who aren't urologists, um, they're still hearing this from their teachers that, you know, and so the myth just gets propagated. So mm -hmm. anyway. Last question on this topic. So testosterone therapy for advanced prostate cancer. How does that work exactly then? I, honestly, I don't know how, what's going on with that. There's been, um, several places that do what's called bipolar androgen therapy, where they will slam a guy with like very high doses of testosterone, um, getting their serum levels to 6,000 or 7,000. And it seems to, I don't know, it kills the cancer regret, you know, I don't know. Um, and then they'll go back to the castration side and they do this flip flop. I mean, that's going to be horrible for your quality of life. Um, if it were me personally, and if I had a choice in the matter and I had prostate cancer, I would much rather just, take high dose testosterone. If I had metastatic cancer, I mean, what am I going to lose? Right. I'm not going to live out my life castrated and having hot flashes and not be able to think straight. Cause that's what you see in these guys. And I, I wish the entire androgen deprivation model would go away, but all the money is there. That's where, you know, originally it was Lupron and, um, and those injections, but now all the oral medicines are still based on anti-androgen therapy. And they come out with new ones every year, Zytiga and uh, Xtandi and Apalutamide. And I'm sure there's a new one at this point. But it's all based on that model where they're just keep starving the cancer cells a little bit more of androgen. But eventually those cancer cells outsmart it and become worse. And there's just got to be a better way. Um, and why not at least start looking into the, the opposite end of things, you know? I mean, they, they need to figure out more of what prostate cancer is, what causes it. And I think they've focused for so long on the hormonal side of causation, and they're looking at the wrong thing. And I think it's that way in most cancers, actually. I think they're looking in the wrong places. I think it's more of a, an issue with the cell itself, cellular metabolism, mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, I don't think it's all genetic. I think there's a very small percentage of cancers that are caused by genetic issues, honestly. Um, so anyway, it's... Yeah, it's a fascinating area, but I don't think guys need to freak out about their PSAs when they get on testosterone. I think if a guy is super low, let's say it's a 60-year-old guy and his testosterone's 90, yeah, his PSA may bump a little bit because he hadn't even gotten to that saturation point yet. And so you may see, but I think the studies I've seen, it maybe an average of 0.9 to 1 
point change in the PSA when you get on TRT. If your if your PSA starts going up faster than that, you don't blame the TRT. You just start working him up like any other man that you'd be worried about. So I don't I don't treat people differently because they're on TRT, and I think that you shouldn't do that. You don't see somebody as different just because of that. You treat them just like you would anybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Jordan, for clarifying uh, all that. We will link to the studies you'll uh, provide under the video in the description. And uh, Jordan mentioned the face group uh, several times. So it's the Facebook group, uh, TRT and Hormone Optimization, same name as this channel. So feel free to join. Jordan is in there, as uh, are a lot of other experts. Thank you so much, Jordan. Thanks, Stephen. And now do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails and go watch another video to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.